All right, guys, so this electric motor came into our shop today. You can see that it's covered in gobbledygook. The shaft itself is seized solid, so we're going to go ahead and take this thing apart and see what is going on inside. Before we start ripping any of this apart, we're going to go ahead and get the cover off the pecker head, expose our electrical connections. We're going to use a fluke insulation tester, and we are going to measure our insulation resistance to ground. It did pass the MEG test with flying colors. The customer said that this unit was running, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. We're going to start by removing all the keys that are in the keyways. We're going to remove the fan, but first things first, we got to get a blood blister by pinching our hand. One thing I don't like on electric motors is plastic fans. Sometimes they put some little slots on these where you can grab them with a puller. This one doesn't have that. We'll remove the snap ring that's holding it on. Also make sure that you're wearing safety squints or safety glasses. I was able to pry on this fan and get it off without breaking it, which is good because even a fan this small and being plastic, these fans can be over $300. And just because the fan fits doesn't mean it's the correct fan. It has to have the right size, it has to move the right amount of air, which will change depending on the speed of the electric motor also. After we remove all the fasteners that are holding this end bell on, we can get a pry bar in between some of these little gaps. We can pull the end bell off, we can see they're using the wrong grease. But even more importantly, this back bearing, it spins freely. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the drive-in. And we can see that she's still locked up solid, so whatever problem we're having is on this end. So I removed the four fasteners holding this front end bell on, and we're going to go ahead and start to pry on this and open this end as well. So there is a seal on this drive end, however, we are getting material. The material that they are manufacturing is getting inside the electric motor, and it's hardening all around the back side of the bearing. So you can see it's still oozing out of our winding here. Now this guy said that they make archery targets out of foam, so this is some type of heat curing foam and you can see that it's a little more pliable around the edges but where the bearing is, where all that heat is being created from the bearing, it is hardening this stuff like a rock. I still want to try to chip some of this away because it's not uncommon for some of these manufacturers to hide a snap ring behind one of the bearings, either the drive end or the opposite drive end. The winding itself checks out electrically but we still will want to pressure wash and dry that as well. In this clip, you can see that when I'm pushing towards these outer edges, like I said, it's not going to get as warm towards these outer edges. And you can see that stuff is pretty soft. But right here in the middle again, right around that bearing, that stuff is rock solid. I chipped enough of it away to feel confident that there was not a snap ring back there. And at that point, I can put this in a press. We can put some pressure on it and be able to get that rotor to come out of its housing. With a little bit of pressure and finesse, I was able to get that thing to slide right out of there. Now we can expose all of that nasty gobbledygook that is inside of our drive end bell. We can see our little seal right inside that bearing housing. I put this rotor in the oven for a little bit, hopefully to make some of that material kind of brittle so I could get it off. And then we have these caution cones that say, do not touch, hot. I learned pretty quick when I started working with motors, you don't just touch things that are sitting around the shop because you're going to find out how hot something is real quick. I was able to chisel a bunch of this material off so that we have a good seat to go ahead and put our puller on. This is another area you kind of want to chip away and make sure there's not a snap ring in front of the bearing as well. Halfway through pulling this off, I noticed that the impact was set on low, so I switched it and we got the bearing off. So this was a shielded bearing. It's a 6208 bearing, and when I pulled the cover off, it looks like there's still a cover on because that's all that material is inside the bearing race with the balls, not allowing this thing to operate at all. So now we're going to have to figure out at this point how much time is it going to take us to clean this. How much do we have in parts? How much are we going to have in labor? We'll reach out to this guy. We'll give him a quote for a new motor if there is one available and for recondition of this one. Cheers, guys.